Hello, Facebook and YouTube. We're back once again. I'm Tim. I work for Golf Cart Garage. We come here every week and talk about golf carts, uh, everything golf carts. We talk to people in the live about their golf cart issues. I've got some regular questions that we collect at Golf Cart Garage all week long um, that we get and we try to help people out, try to steer them in the right direction, try to save them some money. And a lot of times we're successful in doing that. And um, it's very, it's very cool. So this is Tuesday, January 17th. Uh, we're gonna get started with the regular questions and we may interact with some people in the live. Anybody watching in the live, feel free to ask a question. Feel free to say, what's up, Tim? So let's get started with the regular questions here. Question number one. My club car won't pick up speed. What could be causing this and how do I make it go faster? Well, depending on what year and electrical system your car is and what you mean by not picking up speed, uh, it could be a lot of issues, but in your case, uh, I would want to eliminate the batteries. Is low voltage can cause a lot of weird stuff. So we need to make sure that you don't have low voltage going on first, and then we can go from there. So let's, let's eliminate your batteries as, being, as having low voltage. Like take a reading on your batteries just sitting there, and it would be good if you could take a reading on your batteries while your car's moving. That way we would know if you got a battery dropping out or whatever. Looks like Craig is on YouTube. What's up, Craig? Good to see you, man. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. Let me see. What about Facebook here? No, we're good on Facebook. We don't get as many people on Facebook as we do on YouTube. I don't know why. Number two. We have new batteries for our Easy Go Golf Cart. It stops between nine and 12 holes. A neighbor had the same problem and he said it might be the on off switch. How can I determine it if it's that or not? When you say, uh, when you say on off switch, are you talking about the key switch? I have, I have run across a bad key switch before, but it's uh, very seldom. I, I, I wouldn't think it's that. So, you're saying it stops after nine to 12 holes. Well, it's either stopping for, most likely it's stopping for one of two reasons. It's either stopping because you have a battery dropping out. All right. And she said you had new batteries. So what I would want to do to eliminate that, I want to want to make sure that your charger is actually fully charging the batteries. So I would have questions about that. I would want you to take a voltage reading while your car is on charge so I can make sure that you're getting a full charge cycle. Uh, and then your controller, it could be your controller that's heating up after a certain amount of time, like you said, nine to 12 holes. So it could be heating up. So I want you to feel for heat on your controller at the point of failure, whenever the car fails, feel for some heat. Heat's the enemy in any electrical system, especially a golf cart. Let's see here. Number three, EasyGo TXT48 works fine, except reverse is faster than forward with more power. What could be the issue? Number three. Well, I have seen this before. So I would, th these questions I'm going to ask would be based on what I have seen before. First of all, has anyone been working on the cart? Has anyone removed any wires or put anything back? Uh, because you could, it could be as simple because some golf carts are designed to have less power in reverse than they do in forward. There's a system in place that causes that to happen. So they could have put two wires back on backwards or something and it's doing the exact opposite. So that would be my question. Do, did, did anyone work on the cart or remove any wires and replace any wires back on there? Uh, let's see, in Nature Girl, hey Tim, how often do I need to check the water in the batteries during the winter when I'm not using it? Well, Nature Girl, that depends on is your cart on charge or not during the winter. If, is, is it, does it has, if it doesn't have a charge going on, then you don't need to worry about checking the water. But if you've got some kind of charger that is constantly charging the batteries throughout the winter or that shuts off and comes back on and charges the batteries throughout the winter, that's where you're going to lose some of your water. Just sitting there, you shouldn't lose enough water in the winter time to even worry about that. 
Let's see. Anthony Moore, five minutes late, but I'm here. What's up, Anthony? Glad to have you. Let me ask you a question, Anthony. Are you late because the notification came late? Because that's what someone told me last week. That's what, so I'm curious about that. Because I checked on that and everything is set correctly that you should get the notification as soon as the timer starts, which is two minutes before I start. So maybe we might have to increase the length of the timer in order to avoid that. That's why I'm asking. Anyway, if you could, tell me the answer to that. Number, let's see, we're going to go over here. All right, that's cool. Where am I at here? Number four is where we're at. Number four. I bought a 2016 Easy Go over the weekend. It's beautiful and in great shape, but the owner pointed out that when you apply the brakes, the headlights come on. Is this something you have seen? <laughs> I mean, this is tough to fix. Just on the surface, that's that's kind of funny that you, you hit the brakes and the headlights come on. Uh, I have to say that is something that I have not seen. I'm trying to figure out how that could happen. All right. So the only way that I can think of that that could happen would be it's something to do with the plug and play wiring harness that your headlights are hooked to and, and your, your golf cart obviously must have a brake light switch also and it is causing some kind of dead short in the wiring harness and causing the headlights to come off. So you may have to find that you may have to find out where the culprit is in your wiring harness for your lights. Normally the wiring harness for the lights, the brake lights and the tail lights, all that's going to be completely separate from the any type of run circuit on your cart. So if your brake if your brake light switch, you know, obviously if you're you, obviously you must have a brake light switch going on because if you're touching the brake and your headlights come on, so you must be activating a switch that's plugged into a wiring harness. You've got a dead short going on somewhere that's causing your headlights to come on. That's the only thing I can think of. You've got, you've got a, a, a short somewhere. Oh, Anthony said that wasn't it. He just got behind. Okay, that's cool because I was going to make some adjustments to that timer to give everybody time to come in. And Craig says his notification was good this week but was late a week or two ago. That's what I was thinking of, Craig. Uh, uh, it was you that told me that, that, that you, the, by the time you got in, I was already on question five. So yeah, that's what I was thinking of. Tim may have to issue a written warning. Yeah, that would be good. I might have to do that. It's a warning, I'm about to go live. <laughs> uh, Nature Girl says, just to let you know, our show was starting late for me too. I, it notified me two minutes before you started. Well, that's that's how we have it set, Nature Girl. We've got it set two minutes, but we may, that's what I'm talking about. May need to increase that to like five minutes or something, just so to give everybody plenty of time to join. So yeah, that's what I was asking about. Let me check over here. Jared Hansen. What's up, Jared Hansen? And YouTube. He's got a, Three inch Jake's 2017 Yamaha, where the rubber is supposed to put a five inch to hold the subframe onto the spacer bracket. There's no hole in the subframe for bolts. Do I need to drill hole? I'm not aware of a Jake's lift kit that you have to drill. Now, let me ask you this, where the rubber where the rubber mounts are, I'm supposed to put a 5 16 inch bolt to hold this, hold this subframe until the spacer bracket. There's no hole in the subframe. Well, I would want to verify that, uh, that you have the, that you got the correct lift from Jake's because isn't there something to do with independent rear suspension in that year? I mean, could, uh, I think there might be, and it might be, there might be a couple of different lift kits. Or you can always you can always contact Jake's and ask them that there's they have a phone number they actually have a tech support line you can contact them directly they're they're very good they make very good lift kits and I can't imagine that it would say that you that uh that you got a, a lift kit from them and it would not tell you that you needed to drill if you do so that that might be something that you need to do just to 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 be sure I want to be sure that you got the correct one you know the correct part number for the lift kit for for your year. All right. By the way, that question about the lights coming on, 
when you hit the brake, that's the first time someone's ever asked me that, just to, just to let you know. That was a first. Headlights come on when you hit the brake. That's, that's interesting. Number five. Cart ran perfectly two weeks ago when driven and put back in the garage. Now it only idles. All right, that's something we're going to have to talk about right there. I get that. I get that a lot. People telling me that it just idles. Not sure of the problem. Thinking maybe fuel pump or clogged carb. Idles fine and smooth, but when you give it the gas, it just still idles and makes a deep throaty sound. It was running perfect for the last two years. The throttle cable is working as normal and everything looks good in the fuse box area. Thoughts? Thanks so much. Okay. I get that question a lot. I have over the years. Customers tell me that they're it just idles and it won't it won't run or something like that. It just sits there and idles. Well, golf carts don't idle. They don't idle. Gas golf carts don't idle. The you remember automobiles when they used to when you used to have a key that you had to crank them with. You had to stick the key in and turn turn the key and you held the key while the while the cart turns over. Well, that's while the engine turns over, that doesn't mean it's cranking. That just means that the engine's turning over, trying to crank. Well, it's the exact same thing on a gas golf cart, but it's done with your foot. Your foot touches that accelerator pedal, and the golf cart just is spinning over with the starter, but that doesn't mean that it's cranked or that it's running. It's turning over, spinning over, trying to crank when it's doing that. It's not idling. It's just spinning over, trying to crank. It doesn't crank until, when, as soon as it cranks, the cart starts moving. So that's the only time it's ever cranked, unless you've got it in neutral. You know, when you got it in neutral, you can crank it and you can rev it up and you, the RPMs will go up and down. But it's not idling when it's just sitting there. So that, that's always confused me why a lot of people, uh, they describe that to me as their golf cart is idling. But anyway, on, uh, in your case, you need to check for your three things, the three main important things in a gas golf cart. Your golf cart's turning over, so you know your battery's good, you know your starter generator is turning the motor over, but you're missing one of three things. You're either missing spark compression or fuel. Okay, The easiest two to check on that is going to be fuel and spark. Compression, you're going to need a compression gauge you know, in order to check compression, but that would be the least likely of the three, I would think, if everything was fine when it was parked. So you're either missing fuel or you're missing... Uh, spark oh and by the way i have been on several call outs for golf cart issues and drove all the way to, to a customer's house because their, their gas golf cart would not run and they didn't know why and they they paid me to come out to, to work on it and open the seat and looked at the gas tank and it was out of gas so that'd be one thing i, I, I would ask you right off that are you sure it's got gas in it and the next thing you need to make sure that it's getting gas to the carburetor so the way you would do that would be cool, pull the fuel line off of the carburetor and then hit the accelerator pedal and make the golf cart spin over and that should activate the fuel pump and if you've got fuel that spurts out of that line you know you're getting fuel to the carburetor if not there's your issue your fuel pump may not be getting fuel to the carburetor let's see We've got ab in youtube what's up ab what kind of oil should i use for a 2002 ds all right so we're talking about a gas DS cart, so you could use 10W30, 10W40, those are very, very close depending on where you live in the United States if, or, or if, you know, where you live in relation to the equator, uh, you know, 10W30, 10W40, this all has to do with temperatures, either one would be fine. Uh, now, if you're talking about the, uh, you got two places that are oil in a gas cart, you got oil in the engine, that's what I'm saying, 10W30, 10W40, either one would be fine uh, in the engine, and then you got oil in the transaxle. Okay, there's gear oil. That's just regular gear oil, like 90 weight gear oil, you know, in, in the transaxle would be fine. All right. Let's see. Okay, number six. Moving right along. I have an easy go 36 volt cart. I also have a 48 volt life four battery. I only run on level ground in an RV resort. What do I need to do to adapt the two? Okay, so basically you're asking me 
what do we, you need in order to do a 48 volt conversion on a 36 volt car? Because the fact that the battery is LiPo doesn't really have anything to do with it. It's just a 48 volt battery. Uh, you, can put the, you can put a lithium battery in any, any application. So on a 36 volt EasyGo, in order to do a 48 volt conversion, you, the motor is probably gonna be okay. You probably don't have to change the motor. I mean, you, uh, it, it, it'll be okay on 48 volts. You might want to check it for heat after this is done to see if you need to change the motor, but it's, it's most likely going to be okay. You've got to change the controller because controllers are voltage sensitive. You can't put a, a controller that's only rated for 36 volts. You can't run 48 volts to it or it will pop. It'll pop immediately. The controller will bust. And if you want this to be a completely plug and play conversion where it's very simple, then you need to change your solenoid to a 48 volt activated solenoid and wire it in exactly the same way that your old solenoid was wired in. And then obviously you have to have a way to charge the golf cart. You, so you gotta have a new 48 volt charger. In fact, in your case, you're gonna have to have a 48 volt lithium charger you know, for your specific battery pack. So you need to change the controller, the solenoid, and, and you need a way to charge that 48 volt lithium pack. That's all you need to do at first. Now, and then check your motor for heat and make sure it's okay. Uh, after the after it's done okay let's see I am on number seven that I'm gonna check over here that's cool number seven is I noticed that my fully charged Trojan batteries 412s would lose their charge after driving a short distance. I inspected the cables and connections. They are one-year-old batteries and all the connections were fine. I brought the car to the golf cart shop. They explained to me that tire pressure needs to be around 25 PSI or the batteries would discharge faster as it tends to make the batteries work harder. So I put in, I put air in the tires that were at 15 at the time and plug the car in overnight. Should this help? You've got one year old batteries. Okay. <clears throat> now what they told you, what they told you is true, but it's going to be a very little difference. You know, that I do advise people to keep their air pressure to the max in electric golf cars, especially if you have some type of range thing, because it will help you with your range uh, if you get, keep your your tire pressure to the max, whatever it says, whatever it says on the sidewall of the, of the of the tire, it will tell you max recommended air pressure. It's a uh, it's harder to roll or to push a cart with low tires than it is a cart that has fully aired up tires. So that will translate into uh, shorter range in your battery pack if your car is uh, you know if you're dropping out soon that 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 will that will make shorter range. But my question to you would be, how short is short? I mean, how, how far are you, are you able to go before it drops out? I mean, you're talking, what do you mean by short distance? Because if your batteries are only a year old, you shouldn't be dropping out very, very quickly at all, even with low tires. I mean, it'd take quite a while. Uh, so I would want to see, uh, I'd want to, like I always say, I'd want to eliminate you having a battery issue. It wouldn't be out of the question that you would have a battery issue even after just one year. There are warranty claims on batteries. You know, not very many with Trojans. And they're the ones that I've had the least amount of problems with. But the, it, it does happen. So you could have a battery issue. So I'd want to eliminate that with a voltmeter at the time of failure. When it drops out, the best time to look is at the time of failure. Craig says, any luck on doing the show remotely? I literally want to see your cars. Well, I just talked to, I just talked to some of the people that work about that just a few minutes ago and I'm going to, I'm going to do some more testing. What, what it is, I'm trying to get internet there. I'm trying to make sure that I get internet out there and it's, and, and it's got to be good internet in order for me to, to be able to go live on Facebook and YouTube at the same time because that, that does a pretty good pull on the, on the network, you know, my, on my, on my internet. But I think I got it. I think everything's going to be fine. So I'm going to do some testing this week and, and we'll see. Craig, anyway, thanks for asking, man. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, number eight's where we're at. Easy go not holding charge. My batteries are one and two year old batteries. Full 36 volt charge. I can only drive less than half mile. 
then I have to crawl home. I've checked all the sales and they are good. I was told it could be the capacitor ideas. Uh, I'd like to know what they mean by capacitor because capacitor is in the charger, the golf cart charger. You got diodes in the golf cart, but you got capacitor in the golf cart charger. So I'd like to know what they're talking about there when they say that it was uh, possibly the capacitor. But anyway, uh, when it drops to a crawl, you know, you said you have to crawl home. That would be the best time to see if it is a battery issue or not. And if it's not, then I have more questions about the electrical system in your car. If your car, if, if you check those batteries while it's crawling and none of them are dramatically dropping out down to like four volts or less, something like that. If you don't see anything unusual, if they're all right around where they're supposed to be while it's crawling, like in other words, you've got to hook your voltmeter to your batteries and actually drive the golf cart and look at it while, it's, while, you're, while you're driving it. Then you're going to, you're going to look at all six of them. If you don't find any of them that are way less than the other ones, then that then I'm going to have questions about your golf cart electrical system. My first question is going to be, does your golf cart have a run toe switch? Because if it does have a run toe switch, then your problem is likely your speed sensor. It could be your speed sensor. Yep, Craig, looking forward to it. I hope it works out because my shop is brand new and it's pretty cool. Let's see, number nine. Hi, there is a jumper personality plug for easy go golf carts that increases their speed. I have a stock 2015 Yamaha golf cart that goes about 12 miles an hour from the factory. I heard that a Yamaha dealership can change the speed from 12 to approximately 19. Wondered if this was done by inserting the equivalent plug in the speed controller or ideas would like to buy the plug and do it myself and see and save as much money as possible all right <laughs> you got a lot of different information coming there that's that's uh this kind of messed up a little bit the easy go personality plug yes that is that's for a easy go pds cart there are actually four different plugs you could get for the easy go pds system and each plug does have a different amount of ground flat ground speed, but it also has a different amount of regenerative braking. Those plugs are not necessarily for a lot of increase in speed. From the bottom to the top is about 12 to 19, pretty much, is what, just about what you described. But the bottom one has a whole lot of regenerative braking in it. What that does is like when your golf cart, if you were climbing the hill and, you, and the hill was steep on the downside, if you had the, the highest regenerative braking plug in it, which is the slowest flat ground speed plug, when you started coasting down that hill, it's not going to allow you to coast. That motor is going to start pulling back and you could have your foot on the floor and it's still not going to go very fast down that hill, no matter how steep it is. But at the same time, it's putting power back into your battery pack. That's why it's called regenerative braking. And the, and the following three plugs have less and less and less regenerative braking. All the way up to the personality plug is what is sometimes they're called, or the speed plug is what it's called. Anyway, my point is, those are only there for, uh, oh yeah, John Norris is in YouTube. I'll talk to you in a second, John. Hang on. I, I'll answer your question now because I've, I've already read your email to me. And by the way, thanks for the kind words that, that, you, that you said about me. But I'll get with you in just a second. The other three plugs for the easy go have less regenerative braking all the way to the top one, which is the easy go personality plug. And that one goes like 19 miles an hour. Now, Yamaha and club car have a similar system, but it's not personality plugs. I mean, they all have to be done by dealers. The easy go, the PDS one, it can be done by the individual where you just plug it in, you know, and you can go from 12 to 19 with less regenerative braking. But, uh, the, the Yamaha and club car, you, you might have to go to the dealer for that. Well, you do have to go to the dealer because they have to do it with their computer. They don't have plugs is what I'm saying. So don't think that you can interchange something for an easy go like that and put it in a Yamaha or a club car. So there's no place to even put it. It's a completely different system and the way that they go about doing it. Okay. John, I read your email. And like I said, thanks for the, uh, thanks for the kind words that you said about me. Uh, let's go one at a time on your golf carts. We're going to go with the, with the Yamaha with the resistor. We're going to, we'll start with that one. 
the Yamaha with a resistor. See, I remember this because I just read the email just a, just a little while ago. Uh, that one, because it's a resistor system, if I was you, I don't think I would do anything with that. Because in order for that to be upgraded, you really would have to yank the resistor system completely out and you'd have to convert that car over to a modern day controller system. So that car, what I would do with that one, I would just leave it alone and make sure everything is good and use it for what it's, for what it's designed to be used for. You know, something light, maybe some kind of light work. You, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a fine system, but if you're trying to upgrade that and get more speed or something out of there, you're gonna end up catching something on fire because that's a very, very weak system if you start to modify from its stock form. So I don't like people, I don't like to see people that put taller tires or anything, modify higher speed motors on those resistor systems because things get really hot really quick. They get hot even if you don't do that. I mean, they're designed to get hot, but you wanna make them really hot, put a high speed motor or something in there. Okay, your second car, if I remember right, was an easy go marathon, but it's an easy go marathon controller car. Very good platform to, to upgrade. Very good platform to upgrade. Uh, in fact, I have a, a what I call my race car. I, one of my one of my golf cars is actually really crazy, stupid fast. And I used an EasyGo Marathon. It's a TXT, EasyGo TXT. But I used a marathon wiring diagram in order to set up the the to the wiring and the to the controller and the potentiometer. I even switched it over to a zero to five k potentiometer, like is what is in a easy go marathon controller car. I did all that first. I had a, that was the basic design. Then I tweaked the wiring diagram as, as, as the build went on. I eliminated all the forward and reverse and eliminated all micro switches. It, all it has is a big, huge on off switch, a, a big master cutoff, if you will. That's, that's all it has to, to turn it on and it's, and it's live, it's ready to go. But anyway, that's a good car. You, there's many things you could do since it's a controller car. You could go with an updated controller. You would just need a big controller. Get you the biggest of a, of a controller as you can afford. That's a series wound car, so you need to stick with a series wound controller. Uh, just that, just that alone is not going to not going to be that big a deal. It's not going to make that big of a difference because your motor is a uh, is not going to pull any more amps than it actually needs at that point. But the controller is the foundation of your upgraded electrical system. That's the foundation. So once you get the controller in place, you can put a high speed motor in there. You could put a high torque motor in there. You could put higher speed gears in there because that you have the available amps that that motor is going to want to pull those higher speeds, to pull those higher, higher gear ratio. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, and uh, so yeah, that that's a good platform to start with. Uh, easy go marathon controller car. Uh, you could even think about if you wanted to. There's a lot of people that go with reversing contactors, and they eliminate the forward and reverse mechanical forward and reverse by going with a, a reversing contactors. You can change that to a push button. Now that's a little complicated. I mean, that's a project to do that, but they, there are kits available. We don't have any at Golf Cart Garage. I'll, I'll have to talk to them about it, see if we can possibly get some. But it's a kit where it switches your mechanical forward and reverse on a series wound car to a push button re reversing contactor. It's, it's, uh, it's accomplished by using two solenoids, two reversing solenoids. Third car you said you had, 2005 EasyGo PDS. See, I remember all three of them. 2005, I believe, EasyGo PDS. That card is easily upgradable. My per, I, one of my personal cards is an EasyGo PDS. Now, you have to understand something. The weakest point in that EasyGo PDS is the controller. That's the weakest point. In fact, that controller in that marathon is probably a better controller than one in, in the in the EasyGo PDS. Too bad you can't switch them out uh, because because one is a shunt wound and one of them is a series or SEPX and series. So. The first thing you need to do in that one, in the EasyGo PDS, if you plan on any future upgrades for speed or whatever you're looking for, change that controller. Change it to something big. Uh, change it to a big Alltrax. Change it to a Navitas, uh, 600 amp Navitas, if you, if you can afford that. That would be great. Uh, 600 amp uh, or big 500. My, my personal PDS has a 500 amp Alltrax in it. 500 amp Alltrax controller. And I changed my motor in it at the same time to a torque motor for a PDS, not a speed motor. I didn't need speed. I wanted it to work in. I wanted it to crawl around in the woods in. And so I didn't need speed. So mine is a big all tracks controller and a PDS motor. Now at that point, 
I could even put in high speed gears and get and get more speed. It mine's about stock golf cart speed, you know, on rolling on 20 inch tires, but it'll climb anything. I mean, it's real good power and it can crawl around the woods all day long. So I hope I answered your question. I'm just, that's just my opinion on what I would do with the three carts that you asked me about. It just depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for more speed, then I wouldn't do anything with that resistor cart, but those other two, you could upgrade them. Controller, speed motor, have at it. Uh, and solenoid, get a heavy duty solenoid too. We have a, uh, at Golf Cart Garage, we sell combo kits. So you can go to golfcartgarage.com and look at combo kits for series wound, easy go marathon or, 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 or Cepex or shunt wound, uh, easy go PDS. We have combo kits for that. And it even tells you in our combo kits, the percentage of increase that you can inspect, uh, that you can expect you know, like 25% increase in torque, 75% increase in torque, you know, or 15% uh, increase in speed. You know, they, they have an estimate on what the increase is going to be. So, John, did I, did I answer your question, by the way? And thanks for coming here, John. Thanks for, thanks for being here. Kurt Bauer, hey, Tim, is it worth my time to purchase a water-damaged cart? Uh, approximately what needs replacing at what cost? Well... <laughs> I've, I've had that question before. I think I remember answering a question like that in the live, but there's some things that you're going to have to replace when a golf cart goes underwater. I mean, there's no doubt about it. And there's going to be some maintenance that has to be done or you're going to end up with issues. Uh, you need to, you know, make sure that the batteries are still, make sure the batteries didn't get toast, but I can tell you what did get toasted. If it's a stock controller, stock controllers toasted. If it's the stock potentiometer, stock potentiometer is probably toast. The motor, depending on how long it was underwater, believe it or not, you may be able to save that motor, but you're going to have to remove it because if you don't remove it, it's going to rust. It's going to rust inside of it. Same thing with the brake hubs. You may be able to save the brake hubs and your rear end may have kept water from getting, you're going to check, check the oil in the rear end, make sure water didn't get in there. Uh, you're going to have to pull your brake hubs off because uh, they're going to be rusted. And in fact, they may be rusted on. You might, it might be difficult to get those off. That's what I mean by there's a little few maintenance items that are going to have to be done. But definitely your controller's toast, your potentiometer's toast, your motor may be rusted and may need some attention depending on how long. Your rear end may need some attention depending on how long. And you just hope for the best on the rest of your wiring harness, you know, basically. So if you want a project, oh yeah, it can be done. People do it all the time. Let's see, Nature Girl. My husband has an easy go and I have a GEM. We both want to thank you, Tim, for creating your YouTube channel and for sharing your vast knowledge. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for saying that. Uh, I didn't create it, by the way. I don't want to take the credit for creating it. I, the, the fine folks at Golf Cart Garage actually created the channel and they asked me if I would do this. And uh, I agreed to it, and uh, we've been rolling ever since. So thank you, though. John Norris says, fantastic memory, brother. I'm impressed. <laughs> thank you for the info and the vids. Well, thank you, John. I had just read it before I went live. I had just looked at the email. I haven't answered. I hadn't answered your email yet. I was going to today when I got off, off the air, but that's, that's why I remember it, because I had just read it. Craig says, have you ever dynoed your race cart? If so, what kind of horsepower are you getting at the rear? Just wondering. I have not dynoed my race cart, but guess what? My dog, his name is Dino. So that, that, that should tell you how easy, how close I am to dyno in my race cart. That my dog of 12 years old, 12 years ago, he's 12 years old. Uh, this month, he just turned 12. His name is Dino. Keith Poo. Uh, I'm sorry. How do you pronounce that? Keith uh, Popel, is that it? Thanks for sharing your information. It is appreciated. Well, thank you, Keith. If you happen to think of, uh, John says, if you happen to think of anything else to add, hurdles to look out for, or more information on that push button FNR kit, feel free to hit that reply in the email. I sure will, John. I'll, I'll put that, uh, I know of a link that I can send you to that you can check on that. Uh, oh, and by the way, we're going to take you up on that Vegas offer that you uh, that you said. So we're going. I'm going to take you up on that one day. I said something about unlimited beer, if I'm not mistaken. So let's see. Is there a way to get region on my gym car? I do a lot of downhill driving. 
Nature Girl, I'm pretty sure that a gym car is going to have region, doesn't it? Does, does your gym car have a run toe switch under the seat? And if it does, then that means that it does have region, but it might be set for very, very slight. You know, it could be programmable from GEM, G-E-M, and they, they may be able to go in and program it and to give you a little bit more if, you're, if you want more region. So you're, I guess you're telling me that you uh, have to ride the brakes a lot. If you, you know, is, you said you do a lot of downhill driving. Let's see here. John Norris says, offer stands. Well, thank you, John. Appreciate it. Let's see. To get region. You want to get rid of the region. Is that, is that what you're asking me? No, you want less region. Well, see, more region is that more resistance. That's more resistance, you know. So you want less region. Well, it's very possible that they can give you less. Uh, you're going to have to contact somebody that, you know, that has the computer for a gym car, GEM. That may be difficult. I mean, where did you get your... Uh... Keith says you got my last name pronunciation correct. All right, Keith. I'm pretty good. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, I'm on number... I'm on number 10. I'm actually on the on the last question here. 2008 DS Club Car. I changed the plug and solenoid. Then after I finished it, I took it around the block and halfway back it just died out. What do you think is my problem? I also changed my clutch on it and it has new belts too. All right, well I can tell you this. It's not your clutch or your belts if your cart just died out. My question would be, was it dying out before you changed the plug and solenoid or was it doing this already and you were trying to fix the problem? Well, if it was, if it was doing it before, then you obviously did not hit on, on the problem. Chevy man says, look under the Dodge banner. It was part of GEM. Oh, you mean to find somebody that, that maybe could program our car. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I seem to remember something about Dodge. Yes. So listen to Chevy Man Nature. He might know what he's talking about there. I seem, I seem to remember something about Chrysler or Dodge uh, being part of that. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, back to this question here, number 10. About his cart dying out after you took it around the block and halfway back it dies out. Well, that makes, me, makes it sound like to me that... Uh, you got something heating up and getting hot. And one of the things that I have replaced on, on club cars with that engine type setup, one of the things that can cause some problems is an RPM limiter. It has an RPM limiter. And they, I never figured out why, but they put that RPM limiter right down at the front of the motor, right next to the, to the crankcase. I mean, and it's, it gets very, very hot right there. And like I've said before, you know, heat's, a, heat's an enemy in an electrical system. It doesn't have to, even in a gas electrical system. So uh, I have seen those get hot. You know, they'll be, they'll be fine at first. The cart will crank up. And as soon as that gets hot, it starts to get heating up that RPM limit. It can cause a lot of problems. So that could be what, what's happening with your car. So if everything else that we talked about is fine, uh, that, that could be what's going on. Okay. That was the last regular question. We're going to run the coupon code. That's right. Get 5% off any parts you order from golfcartgarage.com if you use TIM7 at checkout. TIM7. This code, this code expires February 10th, 2023. Get 5% off any parts you order. TIM7. Nature Girl says, cannot wait for you to get some gear for all of us. Well, the fact that you just said that and posted it in the live chat is going to help. I promise you. That's, that's going to help. That's going to help me get some gear. So remember that. And everybody remember that. <laughs> if you request something uh, often enough, the powers that be may, may actually see it. And because they're watching right now, I can assure you. Let's see here. That looks like that's going to be it for today for the regular questions. 
Let's give a tip. Well, I've already said it. I've already said it earlier in the broadcast. I usually do. I usually do say it at least once in every episode that I've said that you try to eliminate the simple things first with well, low voltage. Here's the tip. Low voltage can cause lots of different issues. So you have to eliminate the fact if you have low voltage and there's a difference between resting voltage and dropping out voltage. So you gotta, you gotta get used to using the voltmeter and check your batteries while you drive your golf cart. Make sure you don't have any low voltage on any single battery. Like do it six times. That is, the, that is, that's a tip that I probably have repeated. I don't know how many times in the, in these episodes, but I repeat that all the time, but it's very important and it will save you. It'll save you a lot of trouble. All right. That's going to be it for me for today, folks. I want to thank everybody for, for participating in the live chat and we'll see what we can get. We'll see what we can do about that swagger nature girl and Craig. We will see what we can do about that. That's for sure. All right. I thank y'all for coming. I will see y'all on Thursday with another episode. The garage is now closed. <laughs>